Well, President Biden's national security adviser is expected to travel to Israel on Thursday. Jake Sullivan has been in Saudi Arabia ahead of that visit, though. It doesn't have to be that you go from that to literally nothing in terms of putting pressure on going after Hamas targets, Hamas leadership, or continuing to have tools in your uh, toolbox to try to secure the release of hostages. It just means that you'd move to a different phase from the kind of high-intensity operations that we see today. Well, let's discuss this with Rami Khoury. He's a distinguished public policy fellow at the American University of Beirut. He joins us now from Boston. Uh, Rami, as we've been reporting, Jake Sullivan is set to meet with Netanyahu, I understand, on Thursday. After what we've heard over the last couple of days from Biden, what tone do you think those discussions might take this time? Well, the United States and Israel have been able to uh, remarkably put themselves in a corner almost by themselves um, as uh, evil people in the eyes of most of the world. If you look at the polling evidence, the demonstrations, the vote at the UN, any measure that you take, almost the entire world, with the exception of one or two uh, smaller countries and the United States, uh, are, um, are critical of what Israel is doing, heavily critical. Um, and uh, this is something that is uh, very troubling for, for the United States because it has political implications, it has diplomatic implications, economic uh, implications. And the United States is not very good at diplomacy. It's very good at killing. It's very good at creating arms that kill a lot of people and selling them. Uh, and letting its allies kill as much as they want. But it's not very good at diplomacy and sorting out these kind of issues. And there's massive evidence now uh, that the people, ordinary people around the Middle East, are extremely uh, disappointed in the U.S. Only about 1% uh, of people who were polled in, uh, in Palestine, for instance, uh, last week, uh, suggested that they were satisfied with the U.S., where something like 80 uh, 90 percent uh, were, were critical uh, of the U.S. And you've got governments around the Arab region who are looking to balance their previously very strong relations with the U.S. to have more balanced relations with other powers, regional powers and international powers like Iraq, uh, like Iran, mm -hmm. Turkey, China, Russia, etc. Um, so let me jump in there because I, I'm curious about what you just mentioned. You're talking about and describing this increasing isolation for the U.S. Now, Sullivan began this visit to the region with the Saudi crown prince, right? How are relations between the U.S. and Arab nations in the region these days? Well, they're changing. Uh, the, most of the, re the, the problem in the Arab world for the U.S. is that the governments rely heavily on the U.S., most of them, not all of them, rely on it for money, uh, guns, diplomatic support, political support, just for the very survival, the regimes, the governments. The populations of the Middle East, the, of, of the whole Middle East, including Turkey and Iran and the Arab countries, uh, are extremely critical of the United States and have been for, for many years, heavily because of its policy on Palestine and also because of its policy of supporting uh, dictators around uh, the region and its own direct military uh, intervention. And, and the, the United States doesn't quite know how to deal with this. And you've got new things now. For instance, the Yemen situation mm. uh, with the Saudi law, the Houthis attacking uh, ships uh, in the Red Sea. This is extraordinary. Um, and they might, you know, slow down or stop uh, shipping. Um, and this is a vital artery for uh, global shipping. It will hurt the economic interests of everybody. Uh, and you've got the, uh, the problem of uh, uh, the post fighting situation in the region. Nobody knows what's going to happen. There's a zillion speculation, especially here in the United States. Uh, there's a whole industry of talking about what's going to happen after the fighting stops, but it's all speculation. Um, and the United States and Israel have been able to uh, dominate the uh, diplomatic field now with their military prowess. Um, and completely uh, befuddle the whole world in terms of what can happen diplomatically. And everything that the U.S. and Israel says they want to do is very much opposed by Palestinians uh, yes, we've and, been, and we've been hearing uh, that. Uh, Rami, before I, I let you go, I, I do want to ask you about what we've been hearing from Biden recently. He's been talking again about Saudi's normalization with Israel. I've been wondering, because this is the, the beginning of Sullivan's trip, is this potentially some strategy, an attempt at some kind of carrot-and-stick policy with Netanyahu? 
Well, they will definitely, the U.S. will definitely keep pushing for normalization uh, on the Abraham Accords. Uh, but these are pretty meaningless when you get a massive popular uh, opposition and resentment to the U.S. because of, and Israel because of these, uh, uh, these polls. And you're getting uh, evidence from uh, around the region that people are getting more militant uh, and they're supporting Hamas uh, more. Nobody wants warfare. But nobody wants subjugation, occupation, colonization, settlement, uh, as they've been getting from the U.S. and from Israel for decades and decades. So th there's a really big danger for the U.S. now uh, in political and economic and, 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 and military fields. And the Israelis have not achieved their military objectives. Um, and the Hamas is holding out. So uh, they're really going out to try to put out some fires and try to regain control of some kind of diplomatic process, mm -hmm. which they hope they can manage. And it has to include a serious move to a Palestinian state and ending the Israeli occupation. If those things don't start happening, uh, there will just be a continuation of what we've had for the last mm -hmm. uh, 40 or 50 years. And we've seen wow. that. We've seen the Hezbollah has been born, Hamas has been born. Now you've got uh, the Houthis uh, with their power. And you just get more and more of these militant uh, radical Arab groups that are extremely proficient at pushing back mm -hmm. against settler colonial uh, uh, policies, well, imperial policies. That's Rami, what well, Israel and the U.S. We'll continue watching that visit very closely of Jake Sullivan to the region, certainly. Rami Khoury, a distinguished public policy fellow at the American University of Beirut. Thank you for joining us again on Al Jazeera, Rami. You bet.